Driver of the number 18 Interstate Batteries Toyota, Kyle Bush. Kyle, tell us about your run. Well, it was good. We, um, you know, we set up uh, in race trim. We unloaded in race trim and got some laps going there and uh, just kind of got some laps around the racetrack with the new car and everything, trying to figure it out, seeing what it's all about, try to find a balance. And it uh, seemed everything went pretty well there. And we switched it over to qualifying trim and shot up right to the top of the chart. So uh, that was pretty pretty impressive there and so uh, the guys here on the Joe Gibbs racing team with our Camry and everybody has done a great job and we're able to come out here and qualify well again today on the mile and a half stuff so that's promising and hopefully we can uh, get that thing to where it's going to run well in the race and we're going to see a pretty aero dependent race I believe here on Sunday so uh, you know that's kind of frustrating. We'll open up to questions to the media courtesy please state your name and affiliation questions for Kyle. Go here in the back. Kyle, talk a little bit about the safety issue from the COT after McDowell's wreck today. Well, I'd say that, um, you know, from what everybody else has said, it's a combination of things. You know, it's not necessarily the car, but uh, I think a great deal of it was the wall, uh, the safer barrier being in installed here at Texas Motor Speedway. That was, uh, probably one of the greatest things that we've come along with in the recent years as well as the Hans device being there and uh, you know when his when his body compressed into the seat belts his Hans was kept tight and uh, his head wasn't allowed to travel too far so that was a that was a good deal there and then um, you know the the safer car I mean we've seen cars the old cars flip over and and uh, go through some violent crashes at old racetracks and at Talladega and Daytona and stuff like that never really seen one quite like that here at a mile and a half or something, but um, you know it seemed to keep its, t uh, you know its structure relatively well, like we've seen with the other car. And so um, you know it was great that he had a good seat in that car as well too, with all the headrests and everything that we've worked on over the past years. David. David Poole, Star Reserver. Obviously, you guys have worked very hard on your cars this year to make them fast and to make them safe and all that stuff. Um, as you, as, as a race car driver, find yourself ever in that, in that decision of if somebody, you know, do you scrimp on safety to go a half a second faster? Did you, I mean, have you ever been in that position that you think of, or do, has, has, has that era sort of passed us by? Uh, everything's built towards speed. Uh, we're always trying to make the cars go faster and do whatever we can to make them go faster. You know, NASCAR um has done most of the work probably all of the work with uh with the teams and with the drivers and everything with this car in order to make it as safe as possible so you know we haven't had to do much for that but um it's been over recent uh, over development in recent years to where um you know the safety aspect is what it is you know nascar's done a good job of that and uh so we can just worry about making the car go faster we'll go back here uh, wolfgang Monzer from germany ranch press agency before the COT car was launched to drive this year, were you drivers involved with NASCAR discussing the safety issues? What can be improved at the car? Uh, I wasn't in, uh, directly with myself. No, I know Jeff Burton had a had a lot to say. I know Jeff Gordon had a lot to say. Um, I don't know of any other drivers besides those two that uh, that really wanted to try to make a car or make the seat safer. I know Jeff Burton was a a big influencer of the of the seats that we have now with the bigger headrests and everything like that. Um, Jeff, he's been pushing the carbon seat deal pretty big and heavily, uh, the one that Hendrick makes. And then, um, you know, besides that, uh, what we could do around the cockpit, I think it was all Brett Bodine and, um, and his work with being with NASCAR and, and working in the NASCAR um, place over there in Concord that, uh, that he did most of the, the work on trying to make the car safe. Back to David here. There you go. Is this your Atlanta car that you know of? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. So so obviously this is a car that you've come in here with, with very high expectations about, and, of course, you backed it up today. Talk about just your the, the weekend. and I mean, you guys, and you and Carl Edwards basically have been the two guys that have been the best on these kind of tracks so far this year. Well, we have been. Uh, Dale Jr. has been right there, too. You know, his start that he had to the Atlanta race, I mean, he was gone, and then uh, he just kind of fell back the more and the more the track changed and, uh, and went on. So... For Carl and myself, we kind of stayed up there most of the day, and uh, you know, hopefully we can do that again this Sunday. But 
I feel like the biggest thing is going to be the, the clean air. I mean, hopefully the track spreads out and you can run all over this place, but it seems like anywhere, if I ever race anywhere besides right on that white line, right on the bottom of the racetrack, my car is just too tight. I can't, I can't go anywhere besides right there. So um, trying to work a new, another groove into my race car is going to be the biggest thing, and uh, trying to work out the, the tight aspect to it will be another. Bob Margolis, Yahoo Sports. Kyle, everybody I talked to who's in both races said the tires didn't seem to give a lot of grip with the nationwide car, but now they seem to be doing a little bit better with the, with the new car. Do you, see, do you find that to be the same for you as well? Not really. I felt pretty good in my nationwide car. It, it stuck pretty well. Um, I think maybe the thing of it is, is um, you know, the nationwide car is probably 100 pounds lighter this car is a little bit heavier, so it's going into the corner and just pushing down more load into the tire, using the tire to get grip onto the racetrack, where the nationwide car, yeah, it's got more downforce than what we've got, but the weight's not there, so the, the centrifugal force of the car weight isn't there to push the tire into the racetrack. So I felt good in both of them, to be honest with you. We wore out the right side tires in the nationwide cars yesterday here on a green racetrack, and... Um, you know, we had a couple cords showing, but um, those cars were going through the corners, you know, 10, 15, maybe even 20 miles an hour faster than the cup cars. So that's probably why we've seen that. Uh, with the nationwide cars, well, we're going faster through the corner than what we would if we had unrestricted motors. You know, we're going down a straightaway slower and entering the corner slower. so. There's an old saying, easy in, hard off. You get into the corner easier, you could get a harder exit. If you get into the corner too hard, then you're getting a slower exit. You're just kind of transferring the, the corner around for speed. And with the, with the slower straightaway speeds, you're getting into the corner slower so you can carry more corner speed. It's just like at a local short track. If you run a, if you run a car with a big motor versus a spec motor, you know, you're going to be faster in the spec motor car going through the corner because you're not over pushing the tire. You're not killing it. So. Um, you know, the thing of it, it's just weird. Whatever it is, it's just weird. All right? it's, it's a part of racing, I guess. You'd, you'd have to be a race car driver, or maybe I did explain it good enough for you to understand. But, um, you know, going through the corner, going down a straightaway slower, you can produce faster straightaway speed or corner speeds. Uh, Austin Kilgore, Dallas Blog. Um, the mile and a half tracks, they're, they're similar, but they're different. Can you describe the, the differences from, from – kind of the, the seat of the car perspective, the difference between Atlanta and Texas, and how those differences are different between the old car and the new car? Um, well, the new car versus the old car, the old car had more grip and, um, you know, had more downforce, so it had more grip, just felt more comfortable. It would actually turn through the corner, and you could drive it harder to make it go faster. In these cars, you got to slow it down to make it go faster because you just can't overpower the car. The car doesn't have the grip that it needs to to go through the corner with the way that the splitter height is and everything, there's just not a, not enough travel in the front ends. But um, driving around the racetracks, um, Texas is just a little bit narrower. Charlotte's narrower yet. Um, the corners here are not as broad as Atlanta, and um, the track has more grip in the asphalt. But um, you know, and it has a little bit less bank on the straightaways and through the corners. And where at Atlanta, you're going into the corner, you're already in banking, you know, kind of on the straightaway and then it doesn't fall off as quick at, uh, at Atlanta as it does here. Here you're going down a straightaway kind of flat, and then you just hit the banking, and then you fall back out of the banking. Um, where Atlanta, you're kind of gradually in it, and then you gradually fall back out of it. So um, those are sort of the differences. Are, are the differences on, on the more or less pronounced than um, Good question. I don't have a clue. Are they more pronounced? Um, not really, no. no. Further questions? Kyle, thanks. All right, no problem. Good luck. Sure.